I have the opportunity to use Apple Vision Pro for a little bit over a week now and there's a lot that I have to say about this. I'll be approaching my review from a pro photographer perspective and also a creative. And in the end, I will answer the question whether I think this is a worthwhile device to add to your creative workflow or not. And because there's a lot to say, I have broken down my review into two separate parts. This is going to be part one where I talk about the wow moment, the hardware, both the good and the bad, some of the future possibilities combining what's already on the technology market today, the weight of the device, the battery, how's the lifespan of it, eye tracking capability, is it working well, what are some of the glitches that I have found, hand gestures, is this always working every time or there are some false positive as well. And lastly, we're going to talk about the heat generated from the device and using this particular Apple Vision Pro in a hotter climate and some thoughts I have about that. So there's a lot to talk about. Let's jump right into it. This is Artist Right. I have a lot to say about this. Some of you may have already seen the shorts and many of those thoughts will get reiterated in this full review. I really want a chance to fully test this out before I do this full long review that I am doing right now. I see this product as something to showcase as much as it is raising questions simultaneously. You would think that a product would answer a lot of questions that you have, and it does in some senses, but in other senses, it really just makes me wonder where this is going to go. How are we going to use this in a production environment as a creative? Is this something that is going to change the way how we do things? I mean, there's a lot of questions that I have coming from this device, but simply put, this is pretty much the future in today's current technology package. And it is really quite amazing. And to me, this is also one of the most realistic future that we have seen. And it's also really futuristic and sci-fi at the same time, more so than the holographic images, for example, in Star Wars. And the quality is also much better. I really feel like this is probably going to end up becoming one of the futures or one of the fork in our futures, more so than the holographic technology we've seen in Star Wars. I mean, I could be wrong, but this is looking really amazing. So from an engineering perspective, the hardware and the software is just really absolutely great. There are definitely some flaws to it, but overall, it's really something that's great for a Gen 1 product. And if you haven't tried one on yet, I highly encourage you to get a demo from your friend or if you're near an Apple store, book an appointment. Try this on at least once, even though you may not have any intention of buying this, because I will tell you the experience seeing this for the very first time and trying it on is exceptionally profound. Everyone that I've shown this to have multiple wow moments, including myself as well. I was at the store and I was just can't believe what I'm really seeing through Apple Vision Pro. So it's definitely something that you want to try out. This is so awesome. Oh my God. A few things I want to share with you at the store is that I picked up the interface fairly fast and I did not get dizzy from using this, but I normally don't. So keep that in perspective as well. The first thing that I like to touch on for Apple Vision Pro is the hardware. And you will notice that there are a lot of cameras and sensors in the front of Apple Vision Pro, but I will also say that the cameras themselves are also the downside of this device because the Vision Pro is really seeing the world through the camera and is piping those information in onto the OLED silicon so that we would see the micro OLED inside this display. There's two of them in there. And we're relying on the sensor technology right now, which I will say that we have come a long way sensor technology wise, but the smaller sensors that are inside the Vision Pro, similar to the ones that are inside the iPhones and so forth, I mean, there's still a physical limitation to it, and that is a low light situation. I have been using this in low light situation, which is most of our normal homes, right? Or normal offices. Well, what do I found out? Well, there's a lot of lag that happens right away. There's a lot of noise that I see in the scene and in extremely dim situation, sometimes it can't really track your hands anymore and it will pause everything that you're doing with a warning dialogue saying, hey, we can't detect your hands, adjust the ambient lighting in a room. Fantastic, but if you're really going to use this as a big screen, as a big TV in bed, which is something that I have been using it for, it is quite annoying sometimes when I turn to the left or turn to the right a little bit and it just stops everything that I'm viewing on the screen because it can no longer detect the hands. So that's just something to really note about this device. Now, is it great? I think so. I mean, I can view everything in large screen. I can bring it as close as I want to me or I can push this really far away. I mean, the effect of it is really amazing, but 
there's also limitations that you have to be aware of it as well. Now, the other thing that I will also say too is that I have seen what is possible at CES this year. For example, LG has transparent OLED. And that's not even the most amazing part of it because what Samsung has are these micro LEDs or micro OLED rather that you can really see through it already. And it can just overlay the information very similar to what you're seeing with the Vision Pro. Now, I think that when we get to that day, when those technologies are good enough that you can just see through with your eyes and having the cameras there, not necessarily to pump in the information, but rather to know where you're looking, what your surrounding is like, and act as a vision for the ship per se, so that it can overlay the information, those screens and everything in the right position. I think that would be the day where this becomes even more exponentially amazing. But we really have to wait until that day comes. Now, the other thing too, is that if we have that technology and we wanna make this more of like a gaming device, I mean, we're getting into the realm of Ready Player One already because you may have not seen this, but Disney Imagineer have come up with a floor call a hollow tile floor that pretty much allows you to walk around move around but you're staying in one static position but you have that feeling it is simulating that sensation that motion that would be something really cool i'll leave a link to that video in the description you definitely should check that out then there's the weight i will tell you that viewing a tv show or a movie in bed using apple vision pro and having a large screen is absolutely awesome however this device itself when you're using it in that scenario it's a little bit difficult getting comfortable in if you're sitting up that's perfectly fine if you start to slide down a little bit or if you're totally laying down you definitely will feel the weight of apple vision pro on your face and after using this for a while i would probably say about an hour or two when you take this off you're going to notice a few things and i call this the Apple Vision Pro Raccoon Mask or Raccoon Outline because the foam cushion that goes on your face like so, pretty much the area that are surrounding it is turning red on my face. It doesn't stay there for long, but I do see that right away. For instance, once I take this off and I look in the mirror, so it is just something to note there. Now, when I'm using this during the day, I mean, it's really not that bad at all. I have used this sitting down. I have also used this standing up doing different activities is perfectly fine for that, but just getting comfortable in bed with this is a little bit difficult. But there is one upside though, when you're using this in bed, at least it is strapped onto your face so you won't have, for instance, your phone or your iPad falling on your face, which definitely does hurt. I thought you would find that rather interesting. All right, the other thing we're gonna touch on is the battery. So without plugging it in, I'm able to get around two, two and a half hours of uses depending on what I'm really doing. Watching movies tend to make the battery last a little bit longer. Doing other activities, you know, shorten the battery span a little bit more. But the other thing I wanna point out too is that the battery is currently new and it's only lasting this long right now. What happens maybe a year, two years down the road when the battery is depleted below is 90% or optimal performance, but well, we're gonna even get a shorter time using this. The thing about this battery though, is that Apple sells a replacement for $199, which is, I think is not bad relative to the price of Vision Pro, but nonetheless, it's not chunk change, so you can really do that. And you may also have to strap on an extra battery onto the Vision Pro battery in order to prolong the life of it. As far as the battery itself, it is a little bit thicker than an iPhone 14 Pro Max, and this is the Pro Max one. And the size itself, you can see right now that it is a little bit larger. It's probably more akin to, I would probably say, an iPhone Pro, for that matter, 14, 15 Pro. It's going to be around that size or so. Is it that big of a deal? Once I have it in my pocket, I'm using it. It's not so much, but it is something that I do notice it when I have it on me. So the other thing that I'm also going to be trying out as well is that I have my 16 inch M3 Max and what I'm going to do is use the Vision Pro to do a Mac virtual display on it and I'm not going to plug in the MacBook Pro and pretty much I'm going to use a USB cable to have the MacBook Pro power this battery up. And I wanna see how much shorter my MacBook Pro is going to run on a full edit in Lightroom Classic or Final Cut Pro for that matter compared to if I'm not really using it. So I think that would be something interesting to try and I'm gonna do that. Now let's talk about eye tracking. I think that it is great until it isn't. It is impressive until you're really looking at elements and is not really selecting that or it's not really sure which one are you looking at. A few things that I will say about that is I don't think we have ever interfaced with 
an optic navigation the way how we have, or eye navigation, the way how Apple Vision Pro have done before. So many times our eyes will wander around or we're already looking at the next thing because in our brain, we have already selected that item. The other thing that I do found out as well is sometimes I'll look at that particular item, but maybe my eyes are not moving as much. They're not quite as verbose. Vision Pro doesn't really see that I'm trying to select an item or I'm looking at an item. And many times what I have to do is I have to turn my head and then look up at that specific item in order for me to, you know, tap it, for me to click it, for me to engage that. This is something that I see a lot. And it's something that I keep in the back of my mind too, of just somebody with accessibility, how they're going to use this device. For example, if they have a neck injury or something like that, this is also something heavy that you have a strap on. And if eyes alone doesn't really work or it doesn't work too well, it does become an issue where you also have to move your head as well. Just a little anecdote I wanted to throw there on the side. But the other thing I also will say is that we live in a pointer and mouse first world. This has been something that we have used for at least three decades already. And touch is only coming about now where we're starting to think of like the world as a touch. The app interface are starting to be designed more touch for a website. For instance, they are just starting to get more touch friendly. The problem is that for something like an Apple Vision Pro that uses vision, it's really not there yet. So many times, a lot of the elements are just so close to each other. Take for instance, Safari. Trying to use those and navigating a modern website is rather difficult, especially I'll say this, YouTube, because I watch a lot of YouTube videos and it is not a good experience because some of the elements are so close to each other. For example, when I see the video in a grid view, sometimes I would go and tap on those three dots because I want to add this to my playlist. Again, it's not really sure if I'm looking at that or I'm looking at another element that are so close by because everything is just so closely condensed to each other. Now on the iPad itself, when you're trying to use a YouTube app, it's a little bit easier because those have been refined for touch a little bit more. But on a computer, that wouldn't be a problem because you're gonna be using your mouse pointer anyway. So the way how things are being designed right now is not so much to accommodate this device, but I'm hoping more so that if this is one of those things where it's gaining mass adoption that those eye or vision navigation becomes something that is incorporated into design a lot more. The other app that I will also point out too, using an iPad compatible one such as Plex or any other apps for that matter, many times you look at an element that you want to select, sometimes it will show a highlight, many times the default program, because it is an iPad compatible app, it doesn't really show whether you're looking at that or not. So you have to look and you're gonna do the finger pinch and you better hope that it is selecting the correct thing that you are really looking at. So that's another pain point that I found using an iPad compatible app and also navigating this pointer and touch first world. Now let's talk about hand gestures, which I think is great. I love the fact that I can control and do everything on Apple Vision Pro without having to use an external controller. Have we have system like this before? Yeah, absolutely. But most of the time, these are for huge corporations. They are extremely expensive. For example, Microsoft HoloLens would be one of them where you don't have to necessarily use a controller. But also the price point for those and the target consumer is totally different. Those are for the professional market, the price much higher. And I feel that this is probably one of the very first one that we have seen that has the opportunity for mass adoption. And the fact that they have done away with controllers, I think is really great. However, it is definitely not without its downside. So the one thing I already mentioned is that in extreme low light situation, well, it will stop everything you're doing, telling you that you can't track your hand. And that is definitely a mood killer when you're watching a movie and you just want it to continue because it could just end right then where you turn your head on a suspension scene and you're just like, oh man, you just kind of killed that moment. So that's the first thing. The other thing too is that there are quite a few, I would say false positive gestures that it is detecting. So maybe we're just accidentally putting our fingers together like this and Apple Vision Pro sees that we are selecting something and is pausing our videos or doing something else to the application. You gotta be much more careful with the way how you're positioning your hands and doing things now. And that definitely does require an extra brain cycle in addition to telling yourself that you can't just look around and wander your eyes around anymore. You gotta look at that one thing you gotta select first before you move on to the next thing. So those are some of the things I found out. Now, the other thing that I will also say is that trying to watch a movie and trying to snack while you're watching a movie, for example, in a break room or something is definitely something that will get so many false positive because 
how do we bring the ship out of the bag? We pinch, right? We pinch and pull the ship out. I've been trying that out and I get false positive every time the video start to pause and start to scroll because I am bringing the ship out of the bag. And this is pretty much a hold movement and it's moving this way. So I've been using this with YouTube inside Safari and I will tell you it is probably one of the most frustrating experience trying to use this. I guess if I'm using this I really can't snack at the same time. So it's just something to note there. I wish there was a control that you can enable or stop for instance the gesture tracking on this and there's nothing anything like that at the moment. Now as a side note if you do an Apple Vision Pro pickup in store they use the term kitting this together or putting it into a kit. And I find that rather interesting. So I asked them, what do you mean by that? Pretty much the band itself, the cushion and also the light seal is something that they put together in store. So pretty much the box was not sealed from the factory. And what they do is they put everything together, they package it in a box and they seal it in store. So you can bring the box home and pretty much tear open those paper tabs. I thought that's rather interesting. And I think it's only a matter of time before Apple goes to the way of Apple Watch Series 4 where the watch itself and the band are separate. They're no longer in the same box. And I feel that these are going to be components that might go that way in future generations. Just some thoughts there. I find logistic is always something that excites me. One of the things that I have already mentioned is that the hardware is extremely well built. However, the material is nice and soft. It's really great, but these are fabric. And this is a foam with fabric on top of it. This light seal is also fabric as well. What would happen to this if I'm using Apple Vision Pro in a warmer, hotter climate or in the summer months where we are really sweating a lot more? The advantage of releasing this device now is that it's in America only, right? At this point in time, it's also in the winter month when it's really cold. So we're not really sweating that much. It's not something that you have to think about. I really feel this is part of the reason why I said earlier that having these two bands are going to be great because in the summer, it may be one of those where you have to wash this one. So you're going to hand wash this, you're going to wait for it to dry, but you can still use the Vision Pro with the dual loop band, right? And then once this is dry, you can then swap them around and use it that way. The other thing that I also want to point out as well is also this foam cushion. Now the foam cushion is great, and it does prevent this light seal itself from soaking in a lot of the sweat and so forth. And the foam cushion itself, this is $29 for you to replace. Now you can replace them and in the grandeur scheme of things, they're not the most expensive accessory for the Vision Pro. But if you start to buy many of these, well, the price start to add up right away. Now, one thing that I note in the Apple Store is that when you do a try on, they do put an adhesive protection on here and I wish Apple would sell that as an accessory that if we want to use that we can so that you know we prolong the life of our foam pad a little bit more just a little bit of thought there that I have the other thing too that I will also say is that I have not demo my vision pro with any of my friend who is wearing makeup or foundation because I mean think about it this is pretty much going to rub off their makeup and foundation pretty much right away because it is sealing it to your face right so in those situations, like, do I have to clean this or what's really going to happen from that? That's another thing to note there. The other thing that I will say too is that the hardware itself definitely does get hot around the frame. The areas where you're looking through, it may be a touch warmer, but it's really not that bad. However, on the top there, there are two vents. And if you just hover your hands on top of this while you're using the Vision Pro, you will definitely feel hot air coming out. And I really want to know, what would this be like using this in a hotter climate in a warmer month when I'm really sweating and even though I have air conditioning on, you could be sweating. I'm really curious. So I'll be updating you in a few months when the weather does get warmer. The other thing that does intrigue me as well is, for instance, this is pretty much sealing your face. What happened if you're watching a movie or a TV show and the moment become really touching that you cry? So pretty much if you do cry, right, the tears are coming down, they're pretty much going to come down on this cushion on the bottom there. So now you're going to have a soap cushion that is going to be on your face. I mean, what you can do to prevent that is probably lift the Vision Pro up, dry your tears a little bit and put it back on again or slide it back down. That's something that you can do, but it's something that I am really intrigued about. And the other thing too is that if you really cry a lot, is it going to like soak into the part uh, itself where you know, the light seal is and does it go into the headset? I mean, these are one of those things where like, it's great to watch a movie in this, but there's also a range of emotion that comes with being a human being as well that 
I don't know have those things been thought out or not. There's a lot of information that I've covered on this part and I hope that you find it insightful. In part two, I'm going to talk about display and color accuracy. I'm also going to share with you one of the most profound things about Apple Vision Pro and if this thing could be standardized, it has the potential to really change the creative industry and also but a new group of creative that we may have not thought about before. So we're going to discuss that in part two. We're also going to talk about Mac virtual display, editing with Lightroom Classic and Mac virtual display. What are my thoughts about that? And there are additional thoughts I have about Apple Vision 2. So make sure you stay tuned for part two. If you haven't yet, give this video a like, subscribe and hit the bell renew and in our retrust.